Good morning and welcome to our worship today at Grace on this Reformation Sunday. As you can tell, I've got my red on and you'll see some red in our sanctuary, including the beautiful flowers and banners throughout the worship service today. We've got a special treat. Uh, back in May, we were supposed to confirm uh, Eli Evans. He had finished his confirmation uh, work over the last three years and was ready to be confirmed. But uh, with everything that happened with the virus, it's one of those things we weren't able to do. And so we, we chose today, Reformation Sunday, to do his confirmation. And so we'll do that in just a little bit after the prelude as the first part of our worship service. So thank you for tuning in and celebrating with he and his family and... Uh, and for this Reformation Sunday and a time to be reminded that we're a church that's always reforming, always listening for the ways that God is calling us in new ways to help reshape the world with love. So if today is Reformation Sunday, that means next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And unique to this year is All Saints Day and All Saints Sunday actually are the same day. Uh, so that's kind of unique because next Sunday is November 1st. Like every year, we'll be remembering all those in our congregation who died over this last year and doing a special remembrance for each of them as part of our worship service. But something a little extra, we're realizing that there's a lot of grief and loss out there in the world around us. And so we're looking for your help in, in collecting the names of those who have died in your life who might not have been a member of this congregation, a loved one or a friend or somebody in the community that touched your heart or somebody who had a big impact on your faith. And in your email for the last two weeks, there's been a, a little form that you can fill out and share that name. Um, and so I'd like you to go ahead and take that opportunity to share a name with us. If everybody does that, it would be really wonderful. You can share multiple names too. You can fill the form out as many times as you'd like. Um, and we've got something a little special planned as we remember all the saints in our lives. Last Monday, the council met uh, as part of our regular meeting. Of course, we're discussing our gradual reopen process. So back October 1st, we began opening the church gradually to some small groups. Um, we've had some bumps in the road and i'll refer you back to the email so i don't have to enumerate all that now uh, but we are continuing to move forward in this discernment time and so the the next phase of this project is going to be to build out a safety team so if you have some interest in and in helping to to put in place our safety protocols and also be here on a sunday morning to help us live those out we're looking for volunteers right now um, and then the council is going to meet again uh, november the 16th and, and that, that'll be the day that we'll sort of decide then what's next for our congregation. So for now, partially open to small groups, but not quite yet for in-person worship. One final announcement. Today is the midpoint of our Growing Grace Capital Campaign. And we're so excited about all the energy in our congregation. And what this means is that we're going to change what we're asking you to do. So for the last three weeks, we've been asking you to, to pray and to have conversation in your home about how God might be calling you to join into the, the Growing Grace campaign. And now in the second half of this campaign, we're asking you to, to put that prayer and faith into action through completing a pledge or also making a gift uh, to the campaign. And it's really easy to do. There's a great campaign website. It's uh, graceboon.org slash growing grace. But you can also find the link in the email or just go to our homepage and you'll see a button near the bottom. And there you can learn more about the campaign and you'll see two buttons there. One is to make a gift today and the other is to, uh, to, to make a pledge for the next 18 months as we continue through this, uh, through this time of, and also this laying of the foundation to continue to grow the ministries of grace for future generations.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for Elias, whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called him to yourself, enlightened him with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished him in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Elias, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus? and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support Elias and pray for him in his life in Christ? We We do, do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Eli, if you would kneel, please. We'll invite family to lay hands on him as we pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us up to eternal life. Stir up in Elias the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may stand. Let us rejoice with this brother in Christ. We rejoice in the life life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news in all the world.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort us in times of trial. Defend us against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them and the greatest. Greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is Reformation Sunday. Uh, some people uh, jokingly refer to it as Lutheran Independence Day. Uh, I don't know if I'd like that the best, but it is a day when we recall the work of Martin Luther to, to spark off a renewal in the church. Uh, but I think it also ought to be the type of day that reminds us that the church is always in the process of renewal. Each and every age in which we live is a time when the Spirit works and moves and lives within us and calls us to put our hands and our voices to God's work of renewing and remaking the world. And so that's the charge for us on Reformation Sunday, is to be the type of people who don't look back to some point in history as a moment when we got it right, but instead build on our tradition as we look forward. And I think our gospel text today really provides a very interesting challenge uh, and to be quite honest with you, it's never been my, fo my most favorite text on uh, Reformation Sunday. In fact, it, it seems like the one that fits the least well. But let's jump into it for a minute here. Uh, before we get started, I need to just make an important note that we are reading this morning from John's Gospel. All these Sundays prior, for many, many Sundays, we've been reading from Matthew's Gospel. And the two Gospels are very, very different in their theme, in their language, um, how they present Jesus and his ministry. And so I think this is an important thing to just make sure we are ready to hear something a little bit different. John's gospel is sometimes known to be a little more heady, maybe a little bit more complex. Uh, the gospel of John likes to use these um, really rich words and images and then reuse them throughout the gospel. And so when we're hearing words in our text today like freedom and truth, well, the truth is that those things fall many times in the gospel, both, in fact, 
are right there in the first few verses of the gospel, the prologue where we talk about this word of God coming alive in Jesus and what that means for not just the world, but the entire universe. I think the second piece about our text today is it sort of jumps in at the end of a pretty important section. And so we have to zoom out a little bit to to get our context just right. So Jesus has traveled to Judea, the southern kingdom, at the time of the festival of booths. Now it's his disciples that say, Jesus, we need to go and do this pilgrimage festival thing. Uh, And Jesus is the one back at the beginning of the seventh chapter that says, no, the time's not right yet. Uh, But he does go, but goes in secret. What is this festival that they're going to? It's called the festival of of the booths uh, or festival of tabernacle of the tabernacles Um, there are three major festivals that required pilgrimage during that time in judaism there was this one the booths or uh, uh, tabernacle there was also passover and you'll remember we're going to hear about that later in both of these gospels because that's the time that jesus shares the meal and they recall the work of god bringing the people out of egypt and then we also have the the festival of weeks which is similar in time to our festival of Pentecost. All three of these festivals connect to the history of Judaism in terms of their escape from Egypt, from being enslaved, and God's traveling with them through the wilderness, quite literally tenting or boothing or tabernacling among the people as they traveled through the wilderness till eventually placing them in the promised land. The agricultural side, though, is the time of the Passover, is this celebration that you've made it through the winter months. The stores that you should have collected during the non-growing season have lasted. And so it's a bit of a celebration in that way as well. And it also marks the first planting. The Festival of Weeks marks the first harvest. And then this one that we're talking about today is actually the Fall Harvest Festival. The last harvest. You travel and you bring the first fruits of that harvest in offering and also in prayer that everything you have collected will last through the long winter months. It's an important festival in the life of Judaism, as are all three. But what makes this one unique is that it's called the Festival of the Booths. You see, right here before the winter months start, when the growing doesn't happen so easily, they would gather around the story of the wilderness wandering of God's people when they were freed from Egypt, and that God tented in and among the people and traveled with them everywhere they went, protecting them, providing water from the rock, uh, dew that would turn into manna or bread. They'd have quail to eat, when they got tired of the bread, that God was with them through the long wandering time and that God provided for them during that same time. This is the festival that Jesus is coming to. Now there is a certain irony in the text. Jesus is talking about people being made free. And and the Jewish followers of Jesus go, we've never, we've never been enslaved. We're the children of Abraham. Except that they were enslaved in Egypt. And in fact, this is a day of celebration when they are reminded that God set God's people free from being enslaved in Egypt and how God walked through the wilderness. Their response to Jesus in this call to freedom is a very curious one. But Jesus' answer is even more telling. Very truly, I tell you, he says, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. You see, the people are thinking, yes, we are free, even though not entirely. But Jesus is talking about being bound in a different way. Being bound, maybe not so much by the the bad things that we do or the poor choices that we make, but rather being bound by something that sort of 
corrosive within us, a corrosive insecurity, one commentator called it, that actually stands in the way of our ability of tr- to trust God. This, this brokenness within that puts a barrier between us and God in such a way that it seems impossible or maybe even ridiculous that one might place their trust in God and instead place their trust in other places to secure their destiny on their own terms. Christian freedom is an affront to our sense that we can make it on our own. It's an affront to this sense that that we, we can be good enough on our own. It's an affront to the fact that we put our trust in so many other things besides God, whether that's bank accounts or relationships or status or power. We must acknowledge that, that we are people that are, are really struggling all the time with where we place our trust. And everything that we place our trust in, well, it all goes away. And maybe that's one of the real struggles we're having in the world today. The coronavirus pandemic, but also the racial strife that we're in the midst of, all point us to the fact that we've been placing our trust in the wrong places. We've been placing our trust, putting our hope, maybe in our own ability to stay healthy, maybe in our own ability to treat people fairly, maybe in our own ability to isolate ourselves from that which scares us, insulated with with money. The challenge that Jesus puts to us is he needles right into what is at the very heart of who we are, and that is this challenge we have to trust, to really give over self right into the arms of God. But this is what grace is all about. It's what captured Martin Luther over 500 years ago in a world where the church was saying, if you do these things, then God will love you, and then you can put your trust in God. Luther came to despise a God like that until he discovered anew that God moves first in our lives. You see, this call to place our trust in God has less to do with us acting and more to do with what God has first done for us in our lives. That God moves toward us, that God fills us to overflowing with God's Spirit is what inspires us to place our trust in that which really matters place our trust in that which we can really hope upon. The danger is we still struggle with this this seductive message of self-reliance. That our freedom is rooted in our ability to, to make the decisions that we want to do. But Jesus invites us into a different way of being. He invites us into a life that gives itself away in mutual dependence on those around us. What's powerful about what he says to the the disciples in this place is that he's, he's providing them an invitation to freedom, to true and abundant life that begins with the change within. And throughout John's gospel, that change that happens within, that possibility of trusting exists only because Jesus moves first in our lives. That Jesus comes to us and invites us to abide in him, to be with him. God gathers us in first in grace and then points us in love toward our neighbors And what we suddenly realize is this call to help our neighbor in need, this call to pray for our enemy, this call to to serve in Jesus' name, well, well, these are things that are not optional in the life of faith, but it's who we are in the grace of God. 
It's who we are when we are people who place our trust here at the font and there at this table. We place our trust in a God, mysterious as this might be, who moves first in relationship for, uh, to us and then calls us to a ministry that sets others free with that same love. If you drive by the church in the next week, you'll catch a glimpse of this message. Beth Rivas had this idea a month ago in a council meeting, and she said, we sit, Grace sits right here on such a prominent corner, and though we're not as active as we normally are, people sit at this light every day, people that are in desperate need of hearing a message of love. We've got to put something out there, and so we work together and got some help from Vera in the office, and we have our new banner out front that'll be out here for the next, next few weeks for sure on the corner. And it says, you are loved because you are. You are loved because you are. We decided this was the message that our community needed to hear. They needed to know that because we are created and loved by God First, there's nothing that we can do to be worthy of that love. There's nothing we can do to earn that love. And all the other things in the world that say we are not good enough, they fall away to the side in favor of being held in a promise that we are loved first by God simply because we are. Amen. Our prayers of the church for today were prepared by Jan Burgess. With confidence in God's grace, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel. Where the church is in error, reform it. Let us face down our collective fears of otherness to welcome all people, no matter their color, creed, or country. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. As a Christian community, help us to always hear the call to love and care for our neighbors as ourselves. Where the church is divided, unify it. We pray for all believing communities that we will come to a common understanding of inclusion and generosity, working for the well-being of our communities, not division. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Savior, renew and inspire our world. We pray for our country as we draw close to the end of a contentious and often violent election cycle. We pray for all countries who face unrest and violence. 
due to racism, coronavirus, war, collapsing economic conditions, climate disasters, and many other problems. We pray for the victims of COVID, victims of oppression, the victims of slave trade and human trafficking. We pray for those in bondage to addiction, debts, or chronic illness. It is easy to think our world is spinning out of control right now, but maybe our world, world is truly about to turn in a new direction toward you. Maybe this turbulence is necessary for us to let go of our old thinking of what the world should be and to build on and embrace the world as you are remaking it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Spirit, in this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices who have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. We give thanks for those who each week create a service of the word that engages our thinking and motivates our hearts to action. We give thanks for the gift of church music and choir voices that bring peace and comfort. We give thanks for staff who keep us up to date on activities and changes in our church. We lift up our council as they prayerfully consider how to lead us safely forward during this pandemic. We lift up the many people who offer their skills for quilting, circle activities, youth and LSA activities, and the woodlot. Keep calling us out into the world to witness to your love and live your blessing. We pray for all on our prayer list, remembering especially Pastor John and Nancy, Virginia Webb, Judy Mowry on the death of her husband. We pray for Pastor Bob Young. We lift up all who are suffering from coronavirus and all those who are providing care. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who worked for the renewal of the church. We also remember today Carolyn Hughes and all those who have died in the faith recently. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold all in your loving arms. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our worship will continue with the offering. If you'd like to, you can pause our worship video and go over to our homepage, graceboon.org. There's a drop-down option under Donate, and that provides an opportunity for you to, to join into our mission to, to share God's love so that all are served and supported.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace, share God's love. Thanks be to God.